Hello internet, and welcome to another XY Chronicles. So today I'm going to be retouching on a video that I've already made. I've decided to talk about the myths and misconceptions of testosterone. I'm not trying to be repetitive with my content. I'm not quite sure why I made it, but I think it's better to talk about after experiencing testosterone versus before. It's better to as far as this goes to actually experience it, to know for sure. Everyone's journey is different, everyone's transition is different. Taking tea will cause anger issues. That is one of the top misconceptions. Cis men taking testosterone versus trans men taking testosterone or non-binary folks taking testosterone is completely night and day because cis men already have an abundant amount of testosterone in their system. Now they may be low on T levels and have to take testosterone to boost those but that just means that their existing testosterone is enhanced. So it may react differently with, say, a trans or non-binary person who has no traces of testosterone in their system and they're putting a brand new hormone into their body. We all experience emotions different ways. I may take testosterone and feel more happy. It's going to make me more docile maybe and more just, you know, like chill. I won't be so anxious about you know, passing. I did calm down a lot when I started taking tea. The weight off my shoulders was phenomenal. Your body is so used to all this estrogen, not all the testosterone, so when you start taking it, of course you're going to have mood swings. You're going to feel certain ways certain days. The misconception is there, but also it was just like, there were a lot of things that I struggle with personally because of trauma and my reaction to things is a lot different than someone who hasn't gone through the traumas that I've been through. Obviously there were going to be some behavioral differences, but with testosterone, getting on the hormone, I almost felt balanced. I think that once I start growing some facial hair, my voice gets deeper. I think now I look like a 12 year old boy who hasn't hit puberty yet, and it's really frustrating. <laughs> you still look young, dude. Not really 12, more like 17, 18, but you still look very young. Um, but you don't get misgendered, so there's that. Hormone levels in the body are complex and balanced a certain way. When I start tea, or when anyone starts tea, it's a dramatic sudden change. So mood swings are to be expected. If anything, I've been more composed. I've been less explosive with my anger. Pre-tea, I was very apt to react as soon as something happened. A lot of my reaction and impulses have changed now that I've started testosterone, which has been increasingly beneficial to my anxiety because there's a lot less of a panic and just like, you know, off the wall reaction. I think I'm going to feel better when I get on testosterone. You're absolutely right about feeling better. You, you feel a lot better on hormones. Sometimes the emotional change has nothing to do with the T, but everything to do with what's going on in the trans man's life. Going through the early years of transitioning is some of the hardest years of your life. A lot of people want to pinpoint, are you feeling this way? It's probably the testosterone. The only mood swings that happened during the beginning of my transition were a few days before my shot was due, but that's actually to be expected. In the early stages of taking testosterone, your body's still trying to kind of adjust. A couple days before shot day, you might get a little bit more irritable and a little more short tempered just because your body is like, oh, it's about time for that, you know, hormone to come on through wherever you're doing the shot. Mine's in the butt. My dose changed. That was kind of interesting at first to get used to. My doctor microdosed me, so I never like did a big leap to taking half a milliliter, which that's still kind of like low for some guys, they're on one milliliter. Um, but again, everybody's different, everybody's T levels are different, and this is why you should go to a doctor, because doctors can actually prescribe the correct amount of testosterone to take, and you can still do checkups in case anything feels off. Um, our bodies are constantly changing, and sometimes your dose may change, and you may need to lower or height it, high, higher, low, lower or heighten it. Taking tea will make you taller. I wish. Your long bones actually stop growing. I forget what the age is. It's different for everyone, I think. Your bone plates kind of fuse together. And they're like, all right, this is it. So if you don't start testosterone before those plates fuse together, you're shit out of luck. 
if you started with hormone blockers, then took testosterone, you'd probably get taller. Blockers don't stunt your growth or anything like that. They just stop puberty. That's all it does. I'm a short man in a tall world, and I don't like that. I don't know. I just think that having some height on me would make people take me more seriously. Pre-T, I definitely was trying to stay like more in the shadows, off to the sidelines. I just didn't want people to notice me at all. I don't think that they're going to be like, ma'am, or, you know, miss, or whatever the fuck, you know, used to happen. I would like to thank Planned Parenthood and Testosterone for this um, accomplishment in being able to just exist. So once I start T, maybe I will be a little taller because I'm like, hey, I'm definitely more confident now. I think in a way I may appear taller to some people because I walk a little bit more like, you know, looking up, looking around. Testosterone will make your chest disappear. If this were true, top surgery would not be a thing. I, I don't, I don't know how people can think this, but this is, people really think this. If you have a smaller chest, like if you have an A cup, you're fine. You know, odds are you might not even need top surgery if you work out. T might decrease some of the fatty tissue around the breasts, but not all of it. It doesn't just go away. This seems dumb, honestly. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but this seems really fucking dumb. So a lot of it will disappear, but not all of it. It won't go completely away. You just kind of lose weight there. I lost weight there, but it's still very much not a male chest. It, it sucks. That brings me to the fourth myth. If you stop T after top surgery, breasts will grow back. This is also not true. Once tissue has been surgically removed, it is gone. It can't grow back. It's been surgically removed. It's out of your body. They suck all the fat out and they've removed it. So if you stop T, you might gain a little weight there, but it won't all come back full force. Not to be that guy, but this is a perfect time to plug in um, a very interesting point. I have a GoFundMe for my top surgery, and, you know, friendly reminder, it's there. And donations are much appreciated. And if you can't donate, sharing is also much appreciated. Um, just get the word out there, and I want as many people to see it as possible. The link will be in the description below. And it's all over my social medias, so go check that out. Taking tea will make you gay. <laughs> this is obviously a myth because sexuality and gender have nothing to do with the other. A portion of trans men do experience a change in their sexual feelings post-transition. My sexuality actually did change. At that time, I had a lot of internalized like biphobia towards myself. I plan on being one of the people to contribute to fixing toxic masculinity. Yes, I'm transitioning into a man, but I'm not transitioning into my father. As an only child, my parents were like the poster for what I thought parents were supposed to be like. My perception of men has always been related back to my father or not even just him, but the shitty men in my life because I've been in some sketchy, shitty situations with men and they're just not to be trusted. So it was all those things contributed to me really, really, really not wanting to be attracted to men but I can't deny that, so here we are. Testosterone just made me a lot more comfortable with myself, um, like personally, as a person, and my confidence and my self-worth. And I stopped caring what other people thought of me, and the acceptance of my sexuality soon followed. The bigger the dose, the faster the transition. No. There's some enzymes in your body. I try to pronounce it in this past video I'm referencing. Excess T can actually be converted to estrogen by an enzyme called aromatase. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but that's what it looks like. Aromatase. Aromatase? Aromatase something. Uh, hmm. So this enzyme's like, you know what? Let's just make it into estrogen. Like, ha, try and transition. Nope. Don't do this. Please don't do this. I accidentally did it. I got my dose changed to 0.5 milliliters, and I've been at 0.5 for... I've been at 0.5 for a while. For some reason, I thought it was one milliliter, and technically I'm supposed to do 0.5. So I did that for a month, and my beard really started to come in. <laughs> that was back in October of last year. 
So obviously my facial hair has come in quite a lot since then and I've shaved, not shaved, but trimmed. I've only shaved my full face one time and I'm never doing that again. I'm Italian so my facial hair kind of does the little curl <laughs> at the end of it so it like curls up under to make it look more full but there's this big patch right here. After I take a tea shot there's a little bit of tea that like comes out of the needle or bubbles out of my shot. I'll take that tea and I'll rub it underneath my chin um, and a little bit like into my facial hair to kind of um, stimulate more growth. I don't know if it's working. And then I realized what I was doing, so that following month, I switched back up to the point five, and nothing happened. It, there wasn't like any like weird like mood change either. If you want to do this, do it the right way. Don't do it some cheap, fast, easy way. Don't change your own dose. Don't do that. Just wait for your doctor. I know it may be frustrating because you might be talking to other people who are on a higher dose than you but it's really personal and it's really like based on you so don't mess it up because you're trying to take somebody else's dose tea makes you fat no you may gain some weight because your body is doing all that redistribution stuff i think you just take care of your body the way you want to take care of it and keep it in the shape you want to keep it in it all depends on what you're doing and how like what your routine is and what you eat just like anyone it's not different. If you're into going to the gym and you want to like maintain a really uh, toned physique, that's all you. I don't really work out like that and I haven't really changed my diet. Um, I have a fast metabolism. So I did um, start gaining weight in different places and I bulked up a lot. My shoulders are going to broaden, believe it or not. In my shoulders, I got broader. Um, I got, like, I take up a lot more space. My face is going to be more um, chiseled. A square jawline. It's not gonna be so sleek like it is now. My face is obviously a lot more like wide. Trans men are just masculine lesbians. Okay, this is so fucking annoying because it's still a big topic. It's not the same. It's really not. Trans men are not always lesbian first. That's part of discovering your sexuality. Once again, like I've stressed, gender and sexuality are two separate things. I think that's a lot of the thing that people are like so bent out of shape about uh, trans men and trans women. It's like they're just confused about the sex part. It's really none of your fucking business how I get off. So I don't know why you're wondering. It's not about that. It's about like your identity as a person. Guess what? Gender and sexuality? They're different. It's not identity, it's expression. They're choosing to dress that way. They're choosing to express themselves through their clothes that way, or you know, how they have their hair, or whatever the fuck you may say the difference between masculine and feminine lesbians are. But again, that's expression. They don't want to transition. For me, I've been male all my life. They're not transgender. They're lesbian. They're comfortable in their bodies. I wasn't. There's a difference. And then that kind of segues into the next misconception that all trans men come from the lesbian community. <sighs> Again, no. Discovering yourself, you're trying to figure out what you identify as, you don't know. There's the umbrella term queer now. I know back in the day queer was like, Ugh, don't say that, it's offensive. But now it's an umbrella term. I identified as lesbian before I identified as transgender, so yeah. It can seem that way, and there are trans men who start off as lesbian and then realize, oh, it's not just my sexuality, it is my gender. That does happen, but it's not always the case. The last one is you can always tell who's trans. It's really transphobic. Never assume. Um, it's always very polite to ask what pronouns you prefer. Open your mind. Open your heart. Stop making these misconceptions about trans men. Just educate yourself. It's fine to ask questions to a trans person, but don't come in hot and ask really invasive personal questions. And if you want to ask one of those questions, ask if it's okay before you ask the question. Like, hey, is it okay if I ask you something personal about your transition? Or is it okay if I ask you about your genitals? Because nine times out of ten, it's a no. Don't ask a trans person for their dead name. There's some things you just don't ask. First of all, thinking about, does it matter? To you? Is it affecting you personally if if this is how it is? No? Okay, then you probably shouldn't ask. So just be mindful of those things, and not everyone is open to talking about these things either, so just be mindful about that too. 
And Google is a free search engine that you can use to figure out some things because nine times out of ten, it's already been answered on the internet. The internet is a wonderful educational place with plenty of sources and plenty of things that could educate you. There's a lot of reliable websites and sources that you can go to about trans-related issues if you really want to educate yourself further. That's it for today's video. Uh, stay safe and stay well, and I will catch you in the next video of whatever I make.